Finally, Capcom is announcing the Co-Veronica remake. I know everyone and their mum is saying Resident Evil 4 remake is in the works, but no way. No way they skip Co-Veronica, right? They had one job. That's f- Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the Weary Traveler's Bonfire. Hut around, and let's talk about some video games. Believe it or not, I had never even touched Code Veronica until a little over a week ago, and I didn't quite understand Capcom's obsession with trying to act like Code Veronica doesn't exist. It's not like it's, you know, Umbrella Corpse. <laughs> so, I went in completely blind and played through this game a bunch. Bunch. Bunch of times. So you don't have to. And hopefully, by the end of this video, we can understand why Capcom chose to skip this remake. Code Veronica takes place three months after the incident in Raccoon City. We follow choker-loving Claire Redfield who is currently trying to track down her brother. Her investigation leads her to an umbrella facility in Paris. She then raids the place, like, by herself. Who does she think she is? Lara Croft? Also, where is Sherry after the events of 2? Did Claire just drop her off at the local adoption center? I guess she isn't getting a puppy. Claire then gets captured, obviously. Claire is then imprisoned at Rockford Island. Sometime after her imprisonment, she is released because a T-virus outbreak has occurred at the facility. We then meet this shithead, who is also wearing a choker. His name's Steve, and his voice actor is... Just the best. Uh, sorry about that little misunderstanding, but I thought you What is this guy's monsters. voice actor? After a thorough investigation of the island, and this. Ah, uh, uh, yes, Capcom. Have the video cut out. That makes it less weird. We then meet the first twin, whose voice actor also is. Just great. I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base. Wesker shows up out of nowhere, tells us he was behind the outbreak on the island because of course he is. Then he gives Claire the John Deere fucking classic. <coughs> then we kill a tyrant and escape on a plane. That's GG's, isn't it? Like that's that's it. We did it. I don't even know if you're even halfway through this game, the by Antarctic. the way. Wait, what? We're over the Antarctic. What? What? Yeah, what? Anyways, I'm only halfway through the game, and this scene exists. Bro, bro, she's sleeping. Yo! What the fuck was that? Now we're in Antarctica. Don't ask how, who knows. And our plane crashed, and, and, and this scene also exists. Jesus Christ. Oh lordy lord. Thanks. <laughs> that is <isn't> even not. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, <coughs> plane's trashed. Task fucking guy. After exploring the base, we find an exit, but before we can leave, we run into this abomination. This thing has quite a sad backstory. He is actually Alexander Ashford, the father of the twins. Alexia, the twin we haven't met yet, locked her own father up and performed experiments on him with the T-virus, turning him into what we see before us. So, whilst we are taking care of this guy, Alexander, Alfred, the other twin, lets his sister out. Alexia has been asleep in a cryogenic, I don't know, thingy, I guess? I don't know how this works, this isn't realistic at all, but whatever. I mean, this game isn't realistic at all, what am I on about? Anyways. Alexia has been asleep for 17 years after performing an experiment on herself with the experimental T. Veronica virus. Once Alexia wakes, she captures Claire and Steve with her hentai tentacles. Nice. Meanwhile, Chris arrives to save the day. Only, he's on the wrong fucking island. When I mean the wrong island, I mean he's at Rockford Island. But don't worry, using his big brain, he figures out that they are in Antarctica. Once making it to Antarctica, he finds Claire and frees her of the goop. 
because she's in the goop. I don't know why she's in the goop, but she got caught and put in the goop. Don't ask questions, just go along with it. And Alexia shows up and says hi. Wait. Is that another fucking choker? Uh, I swear, someone at Capcom has a choker fetish. I'm calling it right now. Claire and Chris then get split up. Claire finds where Steve is being held. And then, I shit you not, I think one of the saddest, most screwed up scenes in all of Resident Evil occurs. Uh, 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 oh fuck. Uh, uh, what's wrong? Uh, 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 Steve dying? Claire! Can't breathe! What the fuck? Yeah, that that was effed up, wasn't it? I I was not ready for that one when I first saw that. Like I was uh nope. I no. Wasn't ready for that one. Oh my lord. I love you. Claire. Yo, yeah, you've known her for like 10 hours. Maybe less. You had to ruin it, didn't you, Steve Harrington? Wesker confronts Alexia as what he is actually after is the experimental T Veronica virus. Alexia transforms and Wesker pulls the most beta move I have ever seen and runs away like an actual coward and leaves Chris to deal with her. You're, you're joking, right? You're Wesker. You're a fucking pussy. We temporarily put her down and meet up with Claire. We then make a plan to blow this place sky high. Luckily, every facility Umbrella has ever built has an emergency self-destruct system. After killing Alexia once and for all, we have one final encounter with Wesker, setting up the rivalry between them in Resident Evil 5. We escape and then once again blow up all evidence of Umbrella because that's what we like to do in these games because we just don't want Umbrella to die. This game's story was incredibly fun and ambitious. It had so many twists and turns and by the end, even though the Steve mostly pissed me off, his death was handled extremely well. When Claire loses it here, you really feel it. Steve? 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 Now that I know the story for this game, I can't help but question why Capcom chooses to forget about it, as it's incredibly important for the story of the entire series as it builds up the conflict between Chris and Wesker in Resident Evil 5, and then not only that, it also explores the entire lore of half of the Umbrella Corporation. Alexander Ashford isn't just some nobody, he is the fucking co-founder of Umbrella. This is important shit to know. So important in fact that this game was initially meant to actually be Resident Evil 3, not the Resident Evil 3 we got. But what do you do? Mistakes were made. Literally blame Sony for this one. Because they wanted to keep the numbered chronologically on the PlayStation. And Code Veronica was, was made for the Dreamcast. While Resident Evil 3 that we got was meant to be the actual spin-off. But it was made for PlayStation. Code Veronica's gameplay is kinda hard to talk about. On the one hand, I love it, and on the other, I absolutely despise it. Off the bat, it's your standard gameplay you would come to expect from this era with the fixed camera angles. If the fixed camera angles is something that turns you off these games, I can understand that to a degree. I was a bit like that before I gave them a go. My biggest tip is to play Resident Evil 1 Remake and experience the fixed camera angles when they're at its best. And if you haven't played Resident Evil 1 Remake, what are you doing? But that's not why I say I despise this game's gameplay. 
The reason is, is because this is the single most frustrating playthrough experience I have ever come across. This game has two contributing factors to why your first playthrough experience, for the most part, is most likely gonna fucking suck. Number one is it's the hardest Resident Evil game ever made. There is no difficulty slider for this game, just one. So the experience is very optimized for a perfect survival horror experience that the developers have envisioned. Healables are few and far between. I think I only saw a total of five red herbs the entire game. Getting hit will screw up your day and enemy density is at the highest I have ever seen survival horror in Resident Evil. So not including four, five and six. But because of this, this game allows for you to get hit a lot. And I mean a lot. Doesn't mean the hits won't screw up your day, but it allows for you to get hit a lot. And I mean a lot. But because the game allows for you to get hit a lot, you run into a very frustrating gameplay mechanic implemented into this game. The game expects you to get hit. So enemies like hunters, for example, are going to hit you. The way this game is designed, there is no out skill potential really. There's some, but for the most part, these enemies don't get flinched like previous iterations of them. A hunter in the sky in RE1 Remake, for example, you will knock them back if you shoot them. That doesn't happen here. So it creates this really frustrating dynamic. One encounter of the game screamed this feature to the moon and back. And that is this encounter right here. The expected way to get through this encounter is to run away, heal, then keep running, rinse, repeat. And in my opinion, any game with this game design is just doing game design wrong. Number two is backtracking and puzzles. This game's backtracking is every Resident Evil's backtracking on steroids. So for the first half of the game, you have an entire island. On the island, the explorable areas are as followed. Rockford Prison, Mansion 1, Mansion 2, the Military Training Center, and then last of all, you take a submarine to get to an airport. All these areas are explorable at once, with all connecting puzzles, and the puzzles are some of the hardest they have ever been. Tracy, I should, I should, um, legacy, reveal the so, you will have yourself running around the entire island getting one item, then that item will be required on the opposite side of the map to do one singular thing, rinse and repeat for the rest of the game. But, after that first playthrough, it's so much better. The game takes knowledge is power to a whole other level. And this is why you see reviewers like IGN giving the game a 5 out of 10 because they would have played the game once and they were probably getting dumpstered the entire time. This is why, for the most part, when you see people talk about the game now, they adore it because it's just one of those games that just gets better over time. This 100% was so much harder than it needed to be for this one single reason. I was playing this game on the EU version and what I didn't know was the EU version is straight up just worse in every single way. So it's emulated off the PS2 version of this game, which means it has a really slow load times and frame rate problems. 
even though I'm playing on a PS5. Load times are one of the most immediately noticeable differences between the PS5 and PS4 generations. The yeah, I hate those load times. On your marks, get set, and let's test some load times. Wow, now let's compare Code Veronica on the PS5 to the PS2. Shit, now just to find the freaking thing. Well, I'll be right back. Got it. Let's do it. So, uh, I think my code Veronica for PS2 is broken. But the PS5 version is still loading. So, tie? So that means getting an A rank in the battle mode was almost impossible. I really wish I didn't spend four hours banging my head against a wall before finding this out. So, like the little gremlin I am, I made a new account based in the US and bought the US version. But what I didn't know was that meant I lost all my save files, meaning I had to start from scratch. So that, that was nice. But the second I boot up the game, it just felt so much nicer to move. My lord, it was like Claire was wearing ice skates now. So then I immediately got the A ranks done with ease until I got to the Wesker run. I'm gonna heal Wesker completely, otherwise she's, he's gonna die, I'm pretty sure. Because if he gets grabbed, he's fucked. What is it? I think my game crashed. Oh, I controlled it. What's going on? I can't get out of my inventory. Yo? Question mark? It's only already seen the PlayStation button. What is going on? So, for some reason, the game kept on freezing in the final boss arena for this run, which, as it turns out, is really frustrating when you spent like the last 20 minutes killing enemies carefully with only a knife. Other than that, though, you have the A rank in the speed run for the main game, which. Is fine. Fuck. God damn it. I think it includes the credits. Oh. It just has some of the hardest requirements I have ever seen in a Resident Evil. So, for the run, you will need to never save, do it within four hours, never use a first aid spray and make sure you save everyone. And I did all that. I just did it accidentally in four hours and six minutes. Hmm. But don't worry, on my second attempt, I smashed the time limit with a time of three hours and a bit. I can't remember the exact time, but it was, it was three hours and something. It was really nice, okay? I think the reason Capcom chooses to skip this remake, one, yes because RE4 is obviously more popular, but also because it's just simply would be a harder game to remake. So much would be required to change in order for this game to be successful, and not to mention they already have an entire village in RE8 they can just grab and use for RE4. Honestly, what I hope Capcom does is they do remake Code Veronica after 4 and they actually call it Resident Evil 5. So then we can have Resident Evil 5 be Resident Evil 6 and then we can remove Resident Evil 6 from the canon. Then we would have a beautiful set of games for the current generation. 